So, a new box. Smith, we got a box. Yay. I love boxes. And of course, when you have a box, you have to open the box. Okay, good. And you're videotaping it, I see. Yes, well, even you got to do something, you know. Oh, yeah. Don't cut yourself. I have done that before. I can tell you the story about when I sliced my thumb off. That was when I was about six, so. Now, is that styrofoam or is that... Yay, foam! Oh, my yeah, favorite. that is nice. Yeah, that's useful. You can set, you can sit on it. Oh, okay. Like it. I like it. Very good. You got a box? Oh, oh. we have a box with a name on it. Very nice. All right. You need some help? Yep, Oh. So, this... Paperwork. Paperwork. <laughs> Hang on to that. I doubt you'll want to return it, but... So we have here the Ronin S. This is a gimbal stabilizer and pretty much the newest one on the market right now. Excellent. Uh, DJI has done stabilizers for quite a while and they tend to do a really good job with them too. And you have a carry, convenient carry box. Oh yeah. Maybe. Right. Okay, we'll have to see what's inside and check it out, see how it works. And hey, that's inside that box is a box. Is another box. Hey, that's nice. Because like Yzma, everything needs to be a box inside of a box. But H hidden information in uh, the bottom. I'm glad you checked that. Paperwork. Always the important stuff to know. Oh uh, yeah. So I'm gonna set that aside for now. Um, we've used this guy before. This is the GoPro gimbal. The D Ronin S is kind of the same idea. It's a motorized gimbal that's used to stabilize equipment. I can figure out how to open this box. Oh. Let me do anything better. It's tricky. There's a latch on the front, which I've unlatched. It must it's twist. Cool. Ah, it's like the Phantom 4 box. Ah, okay. I never had a Phantom 4. All right. You get to speaking of. <laughs> you don't have the box up. <laughs> That's right. I, I didn't unbox it. Here. So this is the inside of the box. So we have... Let's start with this guy right here. You want me to hold your camera so yeah, you sure. can... Uh, we can get a close-up and we can show this. So we have various <laughs> accessories here. We have a little pouch. USB connectors. Uh, Multiple yeah. USB connectors. That's a, That looks like a specialty connector right there. Yeah, so we'll have to keep an eye on that one. Yeah, who knows what that goes to. I should probably read the manual, but that's oh, no Oh, no. That's no, where's no the fun, fun in that? This is an informational <laughs> video telling people what it is. So you don't want to read the manual. Uh, that is, it looks like, oh, yeah, the a mount for the camera. And look, yeah. it has a little... Is that a plug in it? Uh, I think it's a... I think it's for adjusting. Usually with these guys, you have to do adjustments to get them balanced right. So those are probably for adjusting. This looks like a, this is a very small plate. So I bet that's not the main one. This is more an adapter for if you have to put something really small on it. Hmm, okay. But you do have a lens support, which is something oh, that will yeah, help yeah. hold up bigger sturdier lenses. lenses. Yeah. This guy will hold uh, some bigger cameras. The small gimbals like the GoPro one, they're not designed to hold big cameras at all. That one's actually specifically designed by GoPro. But um, this guy will hold cameras weighing five or six pounds, as far as I know, at least. So it should be Various good tools. for like the Sony A7. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it'll be, it'll be R more than enough for that. I'm kind of wondering, I bet the FS7 is going to be too big, but I think it would hold a Sony FS5. We have multiple accessories, pretty standard. Yeah, I don't think the FS7 would fit sure. on that No, no. It'd be kind of cool if it did, but... Various small accessories, screws, mounting mounting screws... A lot of stuff to here. lose. <laughs> yes, which is why I'm trying to be very careful about how I set it That's up. That's the so kind of stuff like next week you look and you can't <laughs> find it, you know? Uh, this is going to be our plate where we're going to mount our camera. And that's going to go onto the gimbal itself. Uh, this looks like a charger. It looks like a USB charger. If you need to plug in your phone, there you go, USB oh, charger. Oh, excellent. So I'm thinking this charges through USB. That's really interesting. That surprises me for 
Looks like it must be some pretty good sized bolt because it's big, mm -hmm. I guess. Well, USB is pretty standard in terms of voltage, but it, it's that you're not going to lose that one. I know I don't know how many iPhone chargers I've lost. I know. Speaking of charging, this is the battery. Oh wow! Battery slash hand grip. So that guy we're going to be playing around with. Charge the battery to activate before you. So we're going to have to charge it up before we really show how to use it. You know, it's probably like the typical DJI stuff. You have to sign on, oh, yeah. you have to register the battery, stuff like that. Little mini tripod. So cute. Yeah, that is. That's kind of neat. I hope I can put all this stuff back in the right order. Now, this is the fun thing. This is the actual gimbal itself. So this guy, there's some really cool things about this gimbal. It mounts up onto the handle like that. I wonder if that has to go all the way forward to lock. It probably does. Ooh. That's really tight. Oh, there it looks. That goes in all the way. I'll have to play around and I'll have to charge it anyway. Yeah, we don't want to break it live on camera. <laughs> there, was an, uh, there was, when the first iPad came out, I remember there was a video of a guy, he was the first in line at the Apple store to buy his iPad. Uh -huh. And so he walked, he bought, went in, bought his iPad, he opened it up, walked out to the to the line and held it up and showed everybody, got my iPad, yay! And then he just smashed it on the ground and walked off. No, you're kidding. I don't know why, apparently he had way too much money. But uh, We have the Velcro that holds this in place. It's pretty standard on DJI equipment. You don't like rolling around too much. And the camera is going to be mounted right here. It looks like it's going to go in this way. I'll have, to, I'll have to mount up our camera once I get it charged. And There we go. Slides in from the front. It will lock right there. The camera is going to be sitting right here. It'll have to be balanced along with the gimbal. Um, and that is pretty much the long and short of it. Oh. I do know that there are accessories, so you can actually... Oh yeah. Run your camera using the gimbal itself, which is kind of cool. You can battery, you can power that. Yes, I have yeah. a question. Yes. Okay then. Um, one thing I do want to point out. This is kind of a new thing for DJI. This actually has a focus control knob right here. And with certain cameras, that can actually mean you can plug your camera into the USB through, through the gimbal and actually control the focus on the lens uh, right here. Okay. That's something that's usually really hard to do with gimbals because normally with focusing, you're needing to be on the lens. So I'll have to play around and see if that works with the Sony cameras. I don't know. I know it works with some Canon cameras. I've got to play around and see if it works with Sony. Yeah, it depends on, I guess, if they have a deal with DJI and Sony. I don't yeah. know. So. Okay, cool. Perfect. That's kind of cool. Charge it up and we will test it out. Charge it up and test it. Okay. Stay tuned. Hey guys, this is Michael at the Spine Center. Uh, we finished charging up the Ronin S that we just got today. And so I'm going to be taking our Sony A7R and loading that up onto this guy. Uh, it's an A7R. We have the 24 to 70 f2 lens on it, so it's a really heavy lens. We're gonna have to play with that, and we also have the uh, extended battery compartment, which is nice because it does give it a little more weight. The Ronin S is designed to carry up to about eight pounds, so it'll hold pretty big cameras right now, which is good because there's a lot of larger, medium-sized cameras that exist. I'm gonna be doing this as quick as I can, while at the same time, I'm probably gonna have to refer to the Quick Start Guide a few times just to make sure I'm doing everything correct. We have our camera mount right here. We have a number of little bags. I'll be referring to several different items on here. Uh, I'm going to be, I don't think I'll need the hex wrenches right now. By the way, these all come from these little accessory pack. It's cute, it's nice, it keeps everything together. Um, I will point out earlier, 
Uh, I wasn't sure what this guy was. I thought it was for small cameras. It's actually a riser. So if your lens, if this was too short and it hit your lens, the plate, what you would do is you would mount your camera onto the riser and mount the riser onto the camera plate to give it that extra weight so your lens can clear the front. We don't have to do that because of the battery pack. That gives us the extra height we need so that we're not going to be worrying about uh, needing that riser. So what I am going to do, I'm going to grab one of the small quarter 20 mounting pins. They're really easy. And what this is going to let me do, is I'm going to use this to mount my camera onto the pack, onto the uh, sled here. Uh, I want to make sure I have this front screw facing forward because that's going to be our lens support, which I am going to be using. I don't normally use lens supports, but this is one of those times I will be doing that because it's a really heavy lens. Uh, the back end of the camera sled has a place where I can actually screw in my mount. So I'm screw that in. And for the moment, I'm going to just kind of approximate where I want this to be. For me personally, I'm going to line up this just underneath the body because I want to be able to use that mount support, the lens support that comes with the Roland S. I'm going to tighten these down. Some people use porters. I have a pocket knife that just happens to work really well, even without opening it. So I'm going to be using that. And to turn on, or excuse me, to mount the lens support, I'm going to be taking this large-ish thumb screw. I'm going to be taking this Y-shaped object, and this is actually going to go into that front thread on the camera mount. So give me a second while I set this down. I'm trying to do this one-handed and pulling up in front of the camera. It might not work. And actually what I've just noticed is it's not going to be long enough anyway, so it's not going to actually support my lens any. So I'm actually not going to worry about that right now. What I am going to do is I'm going to put my camera onto the Roman S. Now it's obviously not going to be balanced at all. I slid it in from the front and because I was trying to use that camera mount it's way too far forward so I'm going to have to scoop this plate back. Hey guys, are you having a good day? And because the lens is so front heavy, I'm going to scoot it fairly far forward. I'm going to take it down, and I'm going to pull out my actual screwdriver. Because it'll make my life easier. So I'm probably going to be adjusting this quite a bit. Uh, it's not lined up straight, so I'm going to be adjusting that. You do need to make sure your camera has everything set for how you're going to record. Batteries, memory cards, everything ready before you put this guy into the Roman. My side to side, I'm just going to hold for the moment. Front back. There's a lock on the side. I'm going to set this onto the lock position. I can change that if I need. Uh, and this is where I'm going to start referring to the guide over here. To balance, I want to balance the vertical tilt, and it is very much bottom heavy. To do that, I'm going to set the camera vertical. Oh, there's a lot of dust on it. Set the camera vertically. I'm going to try and get this to balance. To balance it, I adjust right here. I'm going to loosen up my vertical tilt here. I'm going to slide it back until it sits level. So 
and then that's going the other way. By the way, I have this on the widest setting, I have this on the 24 setting. Because when you're getting gimbal shots, it's always nice to have a wide field of view. A little bit of bottom heavy. And the first time you do this, it always takes a little longer than you want it to. I have the original run in that I use for personal projects. And the other day I was trying to balance it in a windy environment, and that did not work at all. I had a better simply inside. And you live your own. Okay, I think that's good for that. I'm okay with that for now. The next step, we balance the tilt axis, which you notice this guy's tilted a little far to the left. So the tilt axis is on, is on the back side right here, and I am keeping the door of the A7R closed because that will affect the balance. balance. So I'm going to loosen up this knob right here and I'm going to slide it left and right until I get the balance that I want. And it's going pretty far to the left. Okay, so balancing this guy took a really long time, and I still don't think I have anything for that. But basically you go through and you take the three axes, you pan the tilt, and the roll, and you make adjustments. It takes a really long time. Probably it's one of those things when you do it more and more it'll get faster and faster, but after that, it should be fairly well balanced in terms of what you do. I actually looked at a lot of tutorials online to get it even close to this point. <clears throat> Powering it up, you have to turn on the battery handle first, just hit the button, and then on the unit itself, the gimbal, you hit power, and I've had a little bit of funny behavior with this thing. I've had a couple of times where you turn on the handle and it didn't actually seem to activate the unit even though the lights came on, but um, it's just one of those things. So the unit is on, I want to make sure my camera is on. You do have to go download the Ronin app, I'm sure it's on Google Play and iTunes. When you get into the app, you will connect to your Ronin down here at the bottom. It will probably say connect to Ronin. It connects to Bluetooth, which is kind of cool. You don't have to use uh, Wi-Fi to connect to it. When you connect in, there are three different user profiles. I'm not going to worry about setting up different profiles right now. This is more if you have different operators using it or if you need to quickly change between different usages. But you go into your profile, the first thing you want to do is go into your mode and auto-tune. What this does is it makes a lot of small adjustments to make sure your gimbal is working as well as it can. It's a lot noisier than I thought it would be too. When that gets done, it's ready to shoot. Uh, one thing that I actually kind of like about this is the tripod just collapses down into basically an extended handle, and overall it's following my movements really nicely. If you triple tap the trigger, you can go into this, I guess, kind of vlogger mode, although even with this smaller camera that does get a little heavy, so it might be something you might not use very much. You can change your profiles. If you hold down the trigger button, you can change the orientation. They call this flashlight mode. And it's kind of cool if you need lower shots. 
and it will also, if you hold the trigger, it can change the orientation, go down into a low slung mode, which is actually really cool. I like being able to change the modes that fast. And if I hold down the M, the button turns yellow, and that turns it into a sports mode. I'm going to adjust this real fast. And I'm set to pretty high, pretty fast movement right now. But if you hold down the M, you get into a sports mode, which makes it adjust incredibly fast. Probably useful if you have sports figures or something close by. But we're going to take some footage around the office, and we'll see how it turns out. Hola, ¿cómo está? Paparazzi. Yay! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Myra. Hello. She's here. She gets us coffee. Anybody want That's coffee? What I do best. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> and Denise is just finishing up with the sweeping and stuff. Hey, Denise, I see you missed a spot over here. <laughs> On it. I'll be right on it. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Okay, well, it looks like it's working pretty good. What do you think? It's moving between the modes pretty easily. Because they have they have what they call the standard mode, which is this one, and flashlight mode, which is what they call oh, this okay. one. I mean, it's handling that big lens really well. Oh yeah. You oh, know? you've they've put this. It'll hold up to eight pounds. Because it used to be you'd have to put a small, like a, a nifty 50 or something on it. It has a selfie mode. I like it. Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> She's running off. <laughs> I have to go back and save lives. I'll be saving lives if you need me, okay? Okay. So we got some footage, and overall, this is a really impressive little piece of equipment. Uh, it's compact, but it will also hold, I know, a lot of weight. It will hold, I think, up to eight pounds is what I've said. I've seen these guys loaded up with uh, Canon C200s, and I think Panasonic EVA1s and Sony FS5s. So it has a lot of flexibility, and there's a lot of accessories that are going to be really useful. Uh, one thing that I'm really impressed with is the inclusion of this focus dial. Now we're using a Sony camera, so it's not going to help us because it doesn't work with Sony lenses yet. But if you're on certain Canon cameras with certain Canon lenses, certain Nikon cameras, Nikon lenses, you can actually plug in a, a remote control to the camera and you can rack focus from here included. That's a really cool feature that I wish more manufacturers would take advantage of. But even if you don't have the ability to control it through the camera, you can actually mount a remote, a rod with a remote follow focus unit. So it really doesn't matter which lens you have, as long as it has gears, you'll be able to control the focus using this knob right here. That is brilliant, actually. It's a really good idea. You could put gears on any lens that you have, and I tend to use a lot of manual primes and being able to control focus while using a gimbal so you're not limited to the autofocus is fantastic for really any application I can think of. So this is the Ronin S and it's a pretty good deal. I'm excited to use it and we're going to see what we can do with it in the future. So thank you very much and we will catch you on YouTube.